Hey everyone, welcome to Force Conversation, the show where two scruffy looking nerf herders like to get together and talk about Star Wars. My name's Jay. And I'm Colin. Welcome to the show. Welcome everyone. So, how are you doing, Cole? I'm really good. How are you, my friend? Yeah, cool, man. Ready to talk some Star Wars. Yeah, I am one with the Force, and the Force is with me, and I am feeling very Jedi yeah, today. So, you've got your robes on there. I have got my Jedi robes. I'm feeling at one. And you're, and you're Superman, so you're like a super Jedi. They're the best. Super <laughs> Jedis. We're going to rule the world. <laughs> and I've got massive sleeves. Ooh. Wizard sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Okay, so, um, <laughs> so we've got a bit of news this week then. Yes. Lots of news going on this week. Shall we get started? Um, yeah, let's get on the first bit. News. Um, right, so first item on my news agenda. Oh, Woody. Woody Howson. Mm. There's What's been Woody a little story. Well, Woody, he's been, um, he's been uh, suggested about being in the Han Solo film. Yeah. Yep. But right. who has he been taught in his playing? So, okay, so there's a report. Um, I think it came from the Hollywood Reporter, um, and it was to say that Woody Harrelson is in talks to play an early mentor of Han Solo in the Han Solo, uh, the young Han Solo standalone movie. But this is not anything that's been that's actually been confirmed by Lucasfilm or Disney or by Woody's agents or anything like so that. So it's not a spoiler. It, it's not a spoiler. It's um, it's just something that's this report's come out and it's it's on loads of websites. Um, so, yeah, so a mentor to a young Han Solo. In fact, uh, do we a, want to see that? Specifically, an early mentor to a young Han Solo. Well, um, you know, Han Solo, it depends where they go, because you want to see how he sort of became wily and, you know, learned to be a smuggler and all that kind of stuff, I guess, if they're going back that far. Mm. Um, you know, he would have learnt it from somewhere. This could be someone who he either worked with in the early days, you know, who he kind of learnt the trade from, or it could be it could be someone who like teaches him everything. It could be someone that he he ends up having as an enemy in the end. Do you know what I mean? Like starts out mm-hmm. as a as a mentor, and then eventually like they they become enemies. Then there's the other thing of like, you know, I thought we'd see more Han going to the Imperial Academy and stuff like that. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm hoping it's not going to dwell on him being too young. The last one I want to see is Han Solo well, Oliver. Well, he's be too young, because we've seen Alden, uh, was it Alden Emmerich that, that's, yeah. playing, um, that's playing him, so we already know the kind of age he's going to be. And, and then that also, in a way, causes a little bit of a problem, because um, if he... I don't think that they'll, they'll young him up too much. Maybe there'll be an, another person playing an even younger Han Solo. Well, I was going to say, I mean, I reckon easy. there could be a good... Like, if half the film is about him as a kid growing up mm. or something like that, when, when he, like to say, in this blo- like, Woody could be, like, a Fagan-type character, mm. you know, teaching... Uh, well, actually, if you think about it like this, maybe there'll be, like... And, of course, this is all speculation because no one knows anything, but maybe there'd be something like some flashbacks throughout, mm. you know, kind of like when we saw in Rogue One where Jin saw younger Jin, right? So maybe he sees, um, fla- we see flashbacks of him mm. younger where this guy is his mentor, takes him in, shows him the ropes. But then when we see current Han Solo at that stage of the movie, then he's his enemy or something like that. Mm. Or, you know, maybe it, it, you'll get a sort of background and current background, current, and it will keep like switching between. Because, of course, being a, um, an anthology movie, they mm. can do whatever they want. So, they, you know, they can um, go away from the... Um, from the standard format but that being said whatever they decide to do with it um woody holson he's you know he's a good actor he can play a lot of different roles he's good at comedy he's good at being a bad guy he's good at being like crazy he's um he's played so many different and he he often plays like a bit of a cowboy kind of character well han solo essentially is a space cowboy right Mm. so i think he would be a a, he's a good actor. B, he'd be a good person for that kind of role. And I think we've kind of seen him in that role in the, the Hunger Game movies. 
Well, this is the thing. I think I've seen it. This is my concern. It doesn't sound like something new to me. Bringing in, bringing in a mentor type cat. I want. Do you know, I didn't want to see a Han Solo film in the first place, but if so, I did want to see one, I want to see young Han Solo in his prime, being a smuggler, doing cool stuff. I don't well, want to see maybe. a story about, uh, you know, oh, how his mentor is not his friend Maybe we're getting it all wrong as well. Apart from the fact that Woody Harrelson isn't English. We would never get it wrong, by the way. <laughs> but there's no right at the moment. <laughs> And also, this isn't even confirmed, so it hasn't happened. But this is just really a speculation. Uh, uh, I'm wearing a Jedi robe. I, I don't you get can, things you've, wrong. You've seen through the I'm, force. I see the force. <laughs> I see the future always in motion. Um, yeah, maybe we're uh, we're looking at it the wrong way. Um, apart from not being English, um, he could. Well, be that's one his, of his first problem. Well, he could be one of his mentors in the Imperial Academy. Right, like if they go that puts way, puts on an English accent. We ain't having no imperials without a lovely English accent. Well, unless he's a stormtrooper, then he doesn't have an English accent. Mm. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like, like where, where do you think he would fit? In? Like, let's say they do go with it, okay? Whether or not we want to see that, let's say they do go with it. What do you think of a Woody Harrelson as an actor playing the role, and b? Um, what kind of mentor do you think that they would be considering? I'd like him to be working in the death bar. In the death bar? Yeah, you know, because um, <laughs> didn't it come up in something recently that the Death Star's got a bar? Did it? I, I, I remember reading it. something. Oh, okay. I read something the other day, and it said that there's there, there definitely was a bar in the Death Star, okay. and they called it a death bar. Brilliant. And, I, and obviously Woody could re- reprise his role from Cheers... And work in the death bar, and be and be giving Han advice over the bar. But would the Death Star be in this? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like, not. Han's like that moon. He's like he doesn't even no. know. <laughs> well, he was drunk. He was in the death bar. I didn't realise. <laughs> So yeah. Anyway, so but maybe this means all Star Destroyers have a bar. Who knows? Maybe, you know, you know, on yeah. that top bit. It'd be quite nice to have a little bar, a bit like yeah, Ten can, Forward in Star yeah, Trek. Yeah, like Ten Forward. I was going to say you can see out, <laughs> look at the stars as we float along. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so anyway, that's that's the story about um, Woody Harrelson and possibly playing a, a mentor to young Han Solo. Yeah, I would. Lo- to be honest, he's a good good actor. I'd love to see him in a role in Star Wars. Um, yeah, I'm just. I think I'm just still not 100 percent sold on the whole Han Solo film as, as it is. So. And when we get a bit closer, I'll get a bit more excited, I'm sure. In a way, right, I, I would kind of prefer to see him as some kind of bounty hunter. Yeah. I think he'd play that role so well. And um, I don't want to get this um, wrong, but his his dad's past plays a lot into the way that he is as an actor and all that. Mm. And uh, I think he was some kind of hitman or something, his dad. So, you know, like, dude, make him a bounty hunter. He could be the guy that yeah. mentors Boba Fett. <laughs> right that's gonna work better but anyway whatever let's see where they go with it he you could know, be running a crash with young boba though. fett young lando and young han solo the, yeah a crash definitely like muppet <laughs> babies but star wars babies don't give them ideas man don't do it but there was one other thing with this um when they, they've gone to uh woody Harrelson now but apparently before woody Harrelson, they were looking at christian bale for this role Mm. Why do you say ew? Because I'm not a massive fan of Christian Bale. No, he's a good actor, no. though. He's a good actor. He can play all kinds of roles. Okay, he gives Batman a lisp, but, you know, whatever. Mm. Um, I don't like him! But he's got he's got that voice from the Dark Knight onwards. And when he's Bruce Wayne, he's got a lisp for some reason. But I quite liked him in um, Terminator Salvation, actually. Yeah, he can was play that a lot of roles. Yeah. A, yeah. yeah, but... He's a good actor, I mean, but I don't know that he would have been right for this kind of... No, he's not fun. Role. I, yeah. I want Han Solo film to be fun, and Christian Bale does not say fun. Yeah, he takes it serious. serious. Yeah. He's, yeah, he takes yeah, it serious. But Woody Harrelson, fun, right? He can do yeah, he's fun, fun. yeah, that's why I like him. Yeah, so he would be all right. background, and, yeah. Okay, well, there you go, that's, uh, that's our... Well, that's that, that story, uh-huh. dissected and completely... Yep. Shot down. Um, <laughs> next shot story. Down? Well, I shot first. Um, so let's talk about something that 
has got me very excited. I think this got everyone very excited. And oh, I'll tell you what. If, right, let's, first of all, we're talking about the mid-season trailer for Star Wars Rebels. Mm. Now, this came out of the blue. I was not expecting this. And uh, someone lovely, some lovely fellow posted it on the Force Awakens, not Force Awakens, Force Conversations <laughs> um, Facebook page, which everyone can have a look at and join. Um, and I was thinking, oh, what's this trailer? It's going to be an episode trailer for Rebels. Oh, my lordy. <laughs> I was not ready for for just the awesomeness. Oh, it was good, really it? cool. Yeah, it, it looked really good, didn't it? How exciting and a bit darker, a bit more serious, kind of going more in the direction that we've been Rogue wanting one. to see. We've, we've talked about so much. Well, just going in, in more... To the story, story it should direction. be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, first impression, Jack, I think we should have a little bit of a dissection of, of what happened in the trailer, but... My initial first reaction was, I hope this is what they focused the whole of this last half of the series on, season, whatever you, if you're in America. Yeah, um, because ultimately, that's, as you said, that's the story we want to see. We want to hear about the rebellion. We want to take all the cues from Rogue One and let's go down that road and not have some crappy filler episodes and Definitely. some comedy wacky episodes and some some of your mate the bloke I can never name remember uh, oh, so, Hondo yeah. Oh. Hondo oh. yeah Honda um, so we don't want him if they stick to this storyline and every episode follows this storyline through I will be a very happy man yes yeah I think too. that's the key now, bit okay um, how many episodes I'm just trying to find how many um, episodes did we have left? How many were, did we get in before the break? Was it seven? Yeah, about that. So, uh, and what is it? It's a 22 episode season, something like that, isn't it? So hopefully... It, it's Rebels as long as Clone Wars was. I'm, I think it's short season, isn't it? Is it? I, I'm just, I just need to... I'll, I'll work this Don't out. know. Um, but yeah, um, it, I think there'll probably still be a couple mm. of filler episodes. It's getting too hot in there, huh? Yeah, it's hot in there. Um, but I... I, I don't remember it. owning a droid. Very interesting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I did think that this season's trailer looks absolutely amazing. It was very exciting the whole way through. And are we going? Should we just talk about who was in it? And, and all yeah, that I stuff, wrote yeah? some notes. So should okay. I just go yeah, through my go notes? Through the we'll just, yeah, here's the, the notes things that I got them. all excited about. So first thing kicks off with Obi-Wan's voice. Uh, Ezra's having a little dream, yeah. and you can hear Obi-Wan's voice. It's like, oh, Obi-Wan. And then you realise, he goes to, yeah, he goes to the little um, message thing that he's had from season one with uh, Obi-Wan's the message. The whole, yeah, yeah, where he was warning people not to go to the Jedi Temple. So I thought, so that, so then that, that calmed me down a bit because I think, oh, well, it's not what I'm thinking it is. Um, but obviously that, that was exciting. Cuts to um, Chopper getting hit and smashed across the yes. room. So immediately excited again. <laughs> um, we see Thrawn, obviously. He's got death troopers with him. He has, yeah. Um, obviously we see... Um, oh, we see um, Droidicas. Yes. Which is always yes, good for me. I love them. I like love them. those bad boys. So we're getting um, some of the old um, battle droids and that coming into it. Yeah. Um, we hear about uh, that Thor knows about Fulcrum and is yes. hunting him down. And he's actually saying it to um, Callus, who is Fulcrum. Yeah. So that's good. So, so I'm pre- I'm thinking pretty much his and, uh, his identity is going to get revealed. I think. To yeah, the I think Empire. he's going to get found out. Yeah, I think so. Um, we see Tarkin on a hologram. Yep. Who's the, when he says about Falkrum, he's, he puts his hand on that helmet. You see that? He, he says something about um, Falkrum, he, he puts his hand on a helmet. Now, whose helmet is that? It um, looks like... I'm looking at it now, it kind of looks like one of the... Uh, it's kind of similar to the Night Sisters one. Uh, not Night Sister, what was her name? Seventh Sister, but it's not hers. And it's got some graffiti on it, so uh, I'm guessing that's... Uh, I don't know. Sabine's left hat for him. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? It's, um, someone will know on the group, so if you're on the group and you, you should be watching this, leave a message. 
yeah, yeah, you better do. I'll smack your bum otherwise. Um, the other thing was obviously um, something I sent you the other day because I was reading through the Rogue One Visual Dictionary and under the Death Star bit mm-hmm. and under the history bit of the Death Star, it talks oh, about yeah. how how Saw Gorilla. What's the name? Gorilla. Guerrera. Gorilla. It's not Guerrera. not a Saw Gorilla. <laughs> That's a different character. He, um, he, there was a bit where it just says that he um, came close to thinking that he'd found traces of the Death Star or, or that he, he might come on to the yeah, fact that there was a Death they, Star they being built. Yeah. And so I said to you, oh, do you reckon this would be the storyline from the Rebels? Yeah. And then, I, you know, I think from this trailer, it was almost leading that. That's, yeah. that's where it was going, definitely. definitely. Yeah. So that that's exciting. Um, we see the dark saber and, uh, and Sabine Sabine's getting trained to use it by um, Kanan. Yeah, so so that a lot of that? questions around that for me because I, I thought that was a Jedi thing first of all, and she's not definitely not Jedi. Mandalorian, wasn't it? The, the, the black oh, yeah, saber, yeah. right? But um, you know, I know, and it's it's from her family and all that stuff, but. That's one of those. That's one of the things I'm like. Eh, yeah, really? that was the bit that made me most nervous because I didn't want a story all about Mandalorian on her and her because she's rubbish. She's and a rubbish she's character. Not an honourable Mandalorian, so no, she's rubbish. <laughs> yeah, and so there was almost like because she can weld the dark saber, she's going to be the leader of the Mandalorian. Yeah, it's her family saber, isn't it? Something like that. It comes from her mum or something like that. I'm guessing. Anyway, yeah, a bit, yeah. a vib- little vibrating tool for my <laughs> mum. Yeah. Um, less, less we hear about that, the better, to be fair. Um, we see Saw. He's definitely in there. Um, there are some amazing looking space battles. Yes. And I you've mean, got the, um, those, uh, the TIE fighters, I, I can't remember what, what the type is. They've got three wings. Oh, the new they, ones. Yeah. Well, they came from um, something like uh, one of the Knights of the Old Republic or one mm. of those things, didn't they? I, I'm probably wrong about that, but it's from some expanded universe game. Yeah. Mm. Um, I can't remember which one. Uh, it might even be from an old TIE fighter game or something like that. Um, so they've been brought in. I can't remember what they call them either, but they look pretty cool. Uh, they, they do got, look they've good. They've got like, the insect, the wings, but three mm. of them. Um, so yeah, you well they were in Rogue One, weren't they? Were they? I'm sure they were. The main ones in Rogue One are the Tie Strikers, so they, they're they're flat because oh, they yeah, fly yeah. in mm. atmosphere due to crosswinds affecting other types of Tie Flies, but not these. Good knowledge, mm. here, Jay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, anyway, and, and of that's course, spa- you, the space battle. Not only wicked. did you see Obi Wan in a uh, hologram, you see him at the end. Mm. How you cool jumped me to the gun, I've still got other things to oh, tell sorry, you about. I thought you were finishing there. No, no, no yeah, man. Yeah, rewind. Wedge. Um, you see no, Wedge. Wedge, you see Wedge. Yep, he's now he's now a fully fledged rebel. Yeah, he was in the old X Wing pilot yeah. costume. Yeah. Um uh, there's a lot of fawn in it. Definitely a lot of fawn. You see He and, and there's but also there's dialogue between Sabine and, and the rebels, so it's now it's the game is afoot and if you, you want to be Sherlock Thorn, Holmes. Um, talking to the rebels as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, mm. so there's actually dialogue between the two factions. So yeah. I think it's it's all coming together, isn't it? It's yeah. it's really exciting. That 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 bit was just as exciting for me as as what we were just about to talk and about. Thorn's, which is Thorn's crush, um, threatening them, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. And but the fact that he knows who they are, they know who he is. It, it's bringing it all together, and to me, that gives it more of a sense of urgency. Something's going to happen. Yeah. And then, as you've just got all excited and premature, spoiler, on, <laughs> spoiler, Obi Wan well, is okay. in. But how did, how is he revealed? He you see oh, him. He's a, he's on the little else. campfire. And you see yeah, someone else. Yeah, well, that's someone what I'm else. saying. Ah, go. Darth Maul. Right, now, this this kind of bugs me, in a way. But go because on. It, we're not going to see it in a film. Is that yeah. what you're Yeah. Because, basically, there's the showdown between Darth Maul and Obi-Wan. Yeah. And, um, so, well, we'll talk about that in two seconds. Mm-hmm. The, the one thing that's not in this is Ahsoka. No, that's right. And that, to me, so makes it even... I, I honestly think now after reviewing a few of the and reading up on a few things that I don't think Ahsoka's coming back. No? 
I think that basically because we saw the owl thing that mm. follows her around everywhere and that's now left after she supposedly could have died and it went and hung out with old um, Bendu, um, I think that's it. They're not going to show her anymore in Rebels. You think they'll save I her? I think they're going to leave a the door open. They could reintroduce her, but I think that's it. Save it for a standalone movie or something like that. Mm, I, so. I, I don't think she's going to show up again. Mm. Well, which I'm disappointed about. But there you go. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am actually disappointed. But if they're going to give me Obi Wan, I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. I am disappointed <laughs> about it though because I would have liked to have a, a bit more of a definitive finish to the story because everyone is kind of left going, oh, well, what happened? Like, you know, um, I would have. I would have liked them to sort of tie that up. But, you know, there's still supposedly another couple of seasons. So maybe... I mean, it makes, to be honest, it makes sense that if Ahsoka's not going to be there, that she died fighting Vader. That's where she's It's just that the fact they didn't show it is yeah. what's annoying. Yeah. But I think they've done it on purpose because I think that's the end of her story. Yeah. Unless they come up with something new. Right. Yeah. That, that and that's why, I think, that's why I think they're going to leave it like that. And that's why they've shown the, the bird They thing. don't want to close the door on it too much because they can... Yeah, nothing they can permanent. Find a way Cause, because it, yeah. these days they can't backtrack. Yeah. Because yeah, everything's yeah, canon, yeah. they can't backtrack. And we'll go on to this a bit later on when we talk about novels. <laughs> it's annoying oh, yeah. me. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, I'm interested to hear what you've got to say there. Hmm. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to skip to that last bit with Obi-Wan. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The more, yeah. Thing, the more thing does bug me because... You know, when they when they've sort of talked about they're not done with um, Obi Wan um, in the in the saga movies, mm. but look, everyone's pretty sure that Ewan McGregor's going to end up playing him again. Ewan McGregor really wants he him. will. 100%. Everyone wants it, right? So you're going to see another um, Obi Wan movie. You can't honestly see Darth Maul there now. I did hear something. I don't know where I heard it, but supposedly Darth Maul's meant to run into Vader at some point this season. So yeah, I'd heard that. Right, yeah, you heard that. So yeah. maybe this goes nowhere. Maybe more, you know, escapes or I, I mean, but then it's kind of it pointless. Could, it might even be a bloody four stream for all we know. Could be a four stream. Yeah, it's out of context, right? So we're just seeing a slight clip there, him sitting at a campfire in the middle of Tatooine. But we do know more went that way. Maul's gone looking for it. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. They've set up that Maul was going to find Obi Wan. So yeah. I wasn't surprised when we saw Obi Wan that we saw Maul. As soon as we saw Obi Wan, I was expecting to see Maul. To be honest, yeah. Oh, you were because that because that was the story they were setting up. Yeah. So I mean, it was a bit of a. But if you look at where he is, he's just sitting in the middle of some open desert, and then Maul just strolls up. It's like it's a whole planet, dude. It's a whole planet. Uh... It's not like you know. It's like you sitting in, in like the middle of the desert in Australia, and I get off a pl- I get on a plane and go. You know what, Colin? He's yeah, he's he's there. I know that they've got the force, but the thing is, though, <laughs> you would sense my force energy. Yeah, I probably would, and I. Yeah. The other thing that was quite cool is you saw more doing uh, martial arts, beating up some uh, droids, kicking their asses. Um, you got to see Mon Mothma riding in the ghost. Yes. The crew. Yes, that was a good shout. Um, so yeah. that kind of ties, you know, ties them all together. Um, you mm-hmm. get to see uh, General Dodonna um, and all those guys. Uh, you see. Um, I'm looking at pictures of it here, by the way. You see oh, okay. in a hologram, and they're all around the table. Um, yeah, you get to see all the, the Rebel fleet, the Hammerhead um, ships. Corvettes. Yeah. Um, and you've got a lot more lightsaber action with with um, Ezra, and you know, obviously then training. So I tell you, the my thoughts now on Rebels are, yeah. now that we've seen Rogue One, mm. just get rid of Kanan and Ezra. I think yeah, having I the Jedi's in it is is just detracting from. Definitely. As much as I love the Jedi side of Star Wars, probably more than anything else, it doesn't fit because it doesn't. Story, it does, it? Well, it's completely all it's making me think is, well, how are they going to get rid of them? I spend my whole time thinking, yeah. you're not in the rest of the. Film. You, know, you know what it does for me? It makes Jedi's a little bit less special. Yeah. Because when if you particularly them two. Because they yeah, seem so much more powerful than Luke than ever was. Other, than any other Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> but if you like think back to being a kid, right, and you watched um, the first Star Wars when Obi Wan tells Luke about oh, this is a Jedi's weapon and explains the lightsaber, yeah. and who the Jedi were, an elegant right? weapon, they were this, a more like, civilized time. Even though he was was is one, they were like almost mystical, and it was like oh, they they were you yeah. know around during the Clone people War never seen them. That. 
and yeah, they're not a like hand thing. hand sort of a reaction it to them. Doesn't believe not. in them. It's like yeah. Yeah, I've flown all over the galaxy. I've never seen it, but. Well, if you even though it's only like if thirty you years, had flown ago. all over the galaxy, you'd have seen all of this. You'd have seen Jedi's everywhere, Night Sisters, and fucking like you know, mm. everyone has a lightsaber, so it's not like it's uncommon. And that's what they've done here. And uh, yeah, I would like to see a lot less of it because now where Rebels is um, in timeline is only like a couple of years, so it's not even like well, yeah. You know, well, not, if, no if Rebels Jedi's started five years, before... yeah, like yesterday, they became extinct yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> well, my understanding is the timeline was that Rebels started five years before A New Hope, mm. or Rogue One now. Um, so uh, yeah. we're three years into Rebels, so we've got two years left. Supposedly. Supposedly. Yeah. Now, I don't know. It doesn't. And the other thing, when we're talking about timelines, going back to my Rogue One Visual Dictionary, which is the best book ever. It's a damn I've got, book. I've got to say how brilliant it is. Vader was 41 by the time of um, yes. Rogue One. Yeah. I thought he was older than that. No, I didn't. I, I always knew that. 41? Yeah. And he seems well young to be this old git. Well, so in Return of a Jedi, yeah, but, he looks like a forget, right old git. Yeah, but don't forget, he's A, you know, full of dark side, which drains you anyway. And he's mm. been in that suit. So he's all like pasty and withered. And, you know, he's he's damaged. And I don't by know. The time even... Jedi, even even like, Force Ghost. Well, Jedi is what, like early 50s or something, isn't he? Because you've got. Well, what no, is it's it? only like about six years, three, isn't, it? isn't it? Three years between. Um, Each one. Yeah, and, about six yeah, years. So, so he's, yeah, he's in his late 40s. So he's 46. Yeah, so he's an old guy. He's six guy. years older than me, pal. Yeah, I know, but dude, if you if you were like full of the dark side and you were burnt and you'd been like like floating in back to tanks and stuff. Yeah, and but what about a suit all your life? You'd what about Sebastian with, Shaw, Force Ghost? Yeah, he was old. He looked well old. <laughs> he yeah. looked like an old man. Yeah, but in those days, people looked older. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Okay. It's true. In the olden days, people looked older, right? No? Look at old pictures of someone who's like 30. You'd be like, Ah, uh, dude must be fifty. It's like no, he's yeah. thirty. They lived harder yeah. lives. That's why. Not yeah, that, that's not it. not Vader sat on bloody YouTube life. all day. Exactly. Vader lived a hard life, man. He got he lost his limbs, right? He was like angry, so he's all dark sided up. He had to swim in back the tanks, have a bath. Yeah. yeah. Then he had yeah. to stay in that suit that hurt and everything. You know. He yeah, smelled he like old leather feet. Yeah, exactly. He smelled like old leather feet. Anyway, we're going off topic. Let's go back to rebels. <laughs> um, Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so what else yeah you see Saul Guerrero in there fighting alongside uh, and he actually didn't sound as crazy he seemed he he's seemed fairly as normal crazy yet he hasn't got there yet um, I can't answer that um, Siri just decided to interrupt I lost shut him. up Siri um, then you see uh, <laughs> the um, Mandalorian super commandos uh, the white the white ones and uh, you see yes. Sabine's mum Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a man, yeah. Oh, so let's just go back to Death Troopers. Oh, yeah. I was well excited to see them, and it totally made sense for a fellow white uniform bloke like Kranich. Well, yeah, because they're Imperial Intelligence. If they've got the same same tailor, so they've got the same troopers. Um, <laughs> what I am a little bit worried about now is that we're going to see these guys all the time when we've never seen them before. <laughs> so, yeah, but the only other white suit that we've seen is um, uh, Wolfie Laren. Yeah? Mm. And so we see him in this trailer. Yeah, but what about right. the Death Troopers? I don't want to see loads of them now either. Well, you shouldn't be. Only if you see Imperial Intelligence, who we don't really see that much. Mm. Yeah? Right? Because the only time you've seen him in his, you've seen um, Ularin in his white suit was at the table on the desk. Yeah, shop. I guess. So there's no troops there. There's just the navy troopers at the door, standing like that. But um, yeah, now you are going to start seeing them more. They're the new cool trooper. You shouldn't see Scarif troopers, right? You no. won't see those. But although I think they're really cool, but you won't because that is just the uniform they wear on Scarif. On Scarif. Um, but yeah, Death Troops, I think you're going to start seeing a lot more of those. Um, okay. so you'll just start seeing more characters introduced that wear the white uniform. That'll become the new the new thing right. for the Chief Baddie. I'm guessing, because Death Troops are really popular. Everyone liked them, right? And they're, they're a great toy. So 
it's, <laughs> that's what's going to happen, unless they come up with something new that we've never seen before. Um, what else was in the trailer that we liked? Um, yeah, seeing the, the Mandalorians, you see her mum. You get so tell you what you don't see gone. is a lot of the normal crew. No, it's don't. really they're weird. You hardly see them. They're showing you all the other cool stuff that they're going to yeah. have. Say like they talking. know that I don't want to see them. <laughs> well, there's a lot more popular characters, aren't there? Yeah. Um, as you say, like you see Tarkin in a hologram. We, we've seen Thrawn um, shooting a blaster. Uh, you see him doing a bit of uh, um, martial arts. And some great space battles, and then of course that review that, that reveal of Obi Wan, and they kindly tied it all together between Episode Three and Episode Four by making him go like that with his lightsaber <laughs> right at the end. Was cool. Was cool. <laughs> so yeah. So was, so generally we're on a high. We're looking forward to the next know, half of Rebels. I am looking forward to it. Yeah. That, Don't that cock it up, Filoni. Yeah, and that returns this weekend. That, yes, the, the episode yeah, comes yeah. back this Saturday, so uh, that's yeah, we'll be able to watch that. Yeah, I'll be uh, watching that bad boy. Yeah. Okay. And well, then, that's that trailer tied on to that. Then is the sort of next little story, which is yeah, not next a story, story is but... um, obviously the the voicing of um, some of these characters. Um, so James Arnold Taylor did uh, Obi Wan. Did he do that in the Clone Wars? So he, he did Obi Wan in the Clone Wars. Yeah, and he. Has done him in that in that bit what we talked about earlier, yes, you know, the, and the Jedi holocron. He actually recorded the voice for um, Episode Seven as well, and then they got Hugh McGregor oh. and used his voice instead. Oh, right. Um, um, so he he's he's still down to play a younger Obi Wan, but they brought in Stephen Stanton to do the voice of the older mm. Obi Wan in Rebels, yeah. and he was also the um, voice of Admiral Radius Radius. Um, from Rogue One, and he also played Tarkin in, in, in the Rebels, Rebels and Clone Wars. So, yeah. so he'll also do Tarkin's voice here as well. Why do they need someone different to do a slightly older voice? Well, I guess he, well, he he probably does a good impression of um, Alec Guinness. You do so. a good impression. Do it again. I like that. <laughs> well, come here, my little friend. Don't yeah, I like it. <laughs> it's good. You sound like him. I like that. Yeah. So yeah, he'll. Um, yeah, I guess he just does a better impression of an older version of Obi Wan. I think they should have got you, Jay. I do. I, I think that I should totally have some kind of job, some somewhere to do with Star Wars at Lucasfilm. But as we know, Kathleen Kennedy loves watching this show. So yeah. hopefully, after well, that, she's yeah. gonna you know call up. I'd be happy to make her tea, to be honest. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I reckon I could be a good stand-in for old Obi Wan. Well, yeah, you could. You've got a beard. They just have to spray it yeah. grey. You know? I'll, be I'll be the young one. I'll be young Obi Wan. You can be old Obi Wan. Hmm. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> anyway, so that story. Yeah, excellent yeah, story. That's, uh, you know, he's a obviously a talented voice actor. He does a Tarkin. He does um, Radis. So yeah, you know, we've heard the little clip of him there in the trailer. Yeah. Um, the only it's, it's it's weird though, like how they. They use all these different people because uh, Guy Henry that played uh, Tarkin in Rogue One, that was his voice. Yeah, so and why not just carry on? Yeah. But, um, well, I mean, this guy's played him in the cartoon, so, yeah. You know, but also, in, uh, and... in um, episode three, mm. the guy that played Tarkin, uh, I know him from from... Um, from Farscape. Yeah, that's right. Scorpius, or yeah. whatever his name was. That's him. And I loved Farscape. Yeah, I never watched it, but I've got another friend that really likes it. Yeah, bloody yeah. good. Yeah. Good sci-fi. And the uh, little alien bloke looks like um, the Australian bloke on MasterChef, <laughs> <laughs> which no one's going to get. So let's not no, talk I, about I that. <laughs> no, OK, that's just a joke for me and my oh, wife, because like, uh, we always... We all, yeah, him. Does he? We call okay. him Rigel. So me and my wife sit there and go, oh, Rigel, Rigel. Anyway, let's not go about it. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with Star Wars. Yeah, we're and really getting off topic. No one's listening. <laughs> um, right, OK. All right, next story. Let's, next story. Let's so you're going to tell me about what Adam Driver's been saying on Larry King. Ah, OK, yep. Adam Driver on Larry King. Let me just check my notes I made. Um, yeah, um, he is just talking about Kylo Ren. Um, He's going to be a bit different in episode 8, apparently. Well, they asked him what we're going to see different about Kylo Ren in episode 8, and he didn't oh, really... leading question. 
Yeah, he didn't really give much of an answer. Um, he just sort of said that they get to explore the character a bit more in episode eight because um, in the in the first in episode seven there was a lot of plot points that they knew that they had to hit mm, for the hit, story yeah. long. Whereas in this one they get to sort of open it up and get into the characters a bit more. Obviously, um, you know, uh, um, Snoke says it's time to to. Training, complete your training, complete um, training. Um, and then Larry King said to him, um, "Will Kylo Ren survive Episode Eight?" And Adam Rose said, "It depends on what your idea of living is." So, what 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 do you make of that? Depends I on think your idea of living is. The obvious thing would be either similar to. Um, Darth Vader, how um, Anakin turned to Darth Vader and became a new personality. Mm. Or, again, even more like Darth Vader and Anakin, that he gets a bit chopped up and Comes damaged. Yeah. More, more machine than man. That, that's where I started. To, that's where my mind started but, to go. But isn't that too, or, or too similar to... Like, fully dark side tormented, like, mm. is that living? Or, um, yeah, or, or maybe he dies and becomes a force ghost. <laughs> But I don't what, think so. I, what I would prefer to see is going back to him being tormented about killing Han and rather than it being a physical manifestation or it being replicating what happened to Vader because I think that's a dodgy line to go down. I don't really want to see him replicate that Vader's story. I'd rather see about a guy who is absolutely realised he did the wrong thing in Force Awakens and he's basically having to live with knowing that he's made all the wrong steps and he might even have gone down it so far he can't turn back yeah, but he knows much more complex yeah and he knows that he actually so he's still working for Snoke he's still doing all the things that Snoke commands but inside he knows he's doing the wrong thing and then ultimately by episode 9 he'll he just have to well the, the interesting thing about um about Ben Solo was that um, he was being pulled to the light side, not the dark side, and he was trying to fight the light side and and be dark. You know, most yeah, most people it's the other way around. Yeah. Um, and you know, obviously, like when he talks to Han, he's like, "I know what I need to do," and mm -hmm. he talks about, "I know what I need to do to be dark. I know what I've got to do. Can you help me?" And Han unfortunately said, "Yeah." <laughs> so um, yeah. he's like, "Thanks." <laughs> Spoiler. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, there'll probably always be that element where he's having that fight with the light side and he's trying to stay dark, you know? Yeah. Um, but obviously, at the same time, having done what he did, that's mm -hmm. pushed him over the edge to the dark side. So um, there's actually, a, a, there is a spoiler in the next um, news story that does tie into Kylo Ren a little bit. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's interesting. He doesn't really give anything away because that could just be taken. I mean, that, that is a real offhand comment. Does he survive? Depends on what your idea of surviving it, of living is. And it's like, oh, that gave people something to talk about because we're doing it right now. Mm. But it could just be, I just came up with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, He's just, just trying to deflect an there. answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Um, yeah, so that's it. There's there's not a lot in that story. So is that really a non-story, Jay? One of our famous non-stories. We do that we like, like non-stories, and look, it's a story as much as it's a non-story. Adam Driver <laughs> shrugs his shoulders. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's exactly what it is. And there's yeah. a little video um, on on the link for that. So uh, does it go? If you want to watch this, it's like, I, don't know. Uh, 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 I wish someone would tell me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All so, right, interesting, interesting. Okay, so is that the end of news? I think it that is. That's is all. The, um, the oh, one, but... yes, one more news uh -huh. story. So this one is a bit potentially spoiler. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. So get your old spoiler alert on, Jay. Burr, 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 burr. Okay, right, we're safe. Myself. We're safe. Right. There a couple go. of minutes. Come back in a few minutes if you don't want any spoiler. I don't think it's even a spoiler. But never mind. Well, there's there's a there's a couple of bits in this that could be considered spoilers. So I'm going to give you the overview here. So basically, Disney slash Lucasfilm 
are thinking about what they're going to do after Carrie Fisher's death and how that's going yeah. to impact what they yeah. do with the rest of the films. Yeah. Tell so, me more, Jay. Okay. Do you want me to say what the spoiler things are? There's two yes. things you do. Okay. Because I don't believe it's going to be a spoiler. Right. Before I go into those, um, they, as they talk about um, Carrie Fisher's role, she was meant to have a much larger role in episode eight, which yes, is all finished. You know, they, they filmed that. And then, supposedly, in Colin Trevorrow's episode nine, she was meant to have an even bigger role. Oh, right. right? So, that tells us one thing about episode eight. She right? survives. Right. There's a spoiler. So, but uh, that makes it three spoilers then. Um, so, they're trying to decide what they should do. And, Part of it is the potential... I'm, I'm looking away from camera because I'm just trying to read because I made some notes. Um, part of it is... And you should, I'll put a link to this article. Made notes? What is this thing you talk of? <laughs> so this, this is a report that came from the Hollywood Reporter. They had an insider um, that got all this information. Um, I'll put a link to the full article underneath the video and you should check it out. It's worth mm. having a read. But briefly... Um, is it on Force Conversation Facebook page? I did post it today, yeah. Um, so Colin Trevorrow is going to be meeting up with Disney execs um, from January 10th, so next week, to discuss um, possibilities and what they could do, possible rewriting and reshooting her parts. And this could also be something that might happen with Episode 8. With, like, you know, well, they have to change it, potentially, right? yeah. Now, here's the spoiler bits. There were two scenes with Leia in episode 8 one of them is reuniting with Luke right well we so, thought that would happen surely okay. so there's that one the other one is a confrontation with Kylo Ren right now, look, now you're upset that I spoiled it aren't you no no I'm not upset <laughs> so yeah um, because that could one. that could be anything it could be it could be like that could be, you uh, do that to your dad or it could be like she, they have a yeah. punch up Right. Also, it might not even be in person. It could be on the phone. It could yeah, be well, via Holonet. It could be any of those things. So, yeah. So these are those are the two spoilers. But I just want to be careful because some people will be like, "Ah, oh, that's told me what could happen in the story," you know. And, and um, it could all change. But this could all change. So it it's potentially change. a spoiler, but it could not because now, if they reshoot or rewrite it, they'll have to change that bit of the story. So maybe they want to have a. Uh, a confrontation with Kylo Ren, but now it's going to impact the rest of the movies if they do it with Leia. We don't know what's going to happen there. So then they said, look, you know, he's meeting up with all these execs in January, uh, on January 10th, um, to discuss their possibilities. Uh, you know, people at Lucasfilm are still heavily mourning um, Carrie Fisher's death, so they're not really, you know, they've got a year to play around with this. They're not going to start filming until mm -hmm. early um, 2018. Um, and then there was another thing where they said, you know, they they could cut her role down in both films and maybe shift the focus away from Leia more than they already have it, um, either with possibly using CGI, which a lot of people are moaning about this. But, you know, this is one of those things that if her, if her family consent and this thing just as character, I don't think it's a problem. And it wouldn't be like we saw with Tarkin but more that you, you see her just in glimpses, so you don't really see a lot of her. So they change the story and work it out that way. And, of course, they might use body doubles in some bits mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, so it's, it's really changing um, the way that um, the, the movies are going to play out now. So they already had their story there. Obviously, unfortunately, this happened. And See, I'm really surprised that Leia was going to play a major part because... I always thought these films were about great, you know, I thought Force yeah, Awakens was yeah, about yeah. setting up the new characters yeah. and that's moving Passing. away. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. thought by the end of episode eight, we probably wouldn't have any of the old characters in, with my view. Well, I mean, you know, the thing is, her role, you would kind of expect it to be a little bit bigger because obviously Luke's going to come back. We see that from the end of episode seven, you're going to get someone and they're going to reunite. We all expected that bit. So, a bit bigger in that way. See, uh, I don't even know if I did expect that. I thought the Luke storyline was going to be separate. 
I didn't, I didn't think, the, I didn't think the, they were going to cross out. I, I didn't really expect them to meet. To be well, I, I didn't. And that's why in episode seven, I was a little bit surprised when Han Solo died without seeing Luke. Because I was like, oh, man, Solo never meets up with Luke again. That mm. sucks. And then it was like, oh, you've got the original three there. You don't that would have been nice together, to see the three right? of them together, yeah. And, and so then Luke and Leia, brother and sister, I did think that they would come together at some point. Um, in the next movie but then it's the the bit where they say about the confrontation with Kylo Ren because that is moving her into more of a role like you know he's killed his dad she obviously felt it through the force and now she wants to like have it out with her son right so um, that you know she has to have a large role for, for that but then they wanted to have a, an even bigger role in number number nine I don't know where that was going doesn't make that doesn't make sense to me yeah, well, that's that's just the rumours that's out there anyway. So, um, yeah, so they're reaching her parts, which means changing some of the plot and some of the direction of the story. Um, I think you know, I think the problem up, is, really, knowing is. too much now anyway, in the day, I, from just the way that The Force Awakens was, was wrote, with um, the way that JJ and um, Kaz, Kaz then, Kathleen... Basi- and, yeah, oh, basically... Kathleen, yeah, yeah. Yeah, throughout the whole of the shooting, were changing and working and evolving yeah. the scripts. To be honest, yeah, and and, and do that anyway, right? Yeah, and it just sounds to me that it it seems a bit too plotted out. I think surely you'd want to see what episode eight does. I think this is a little bit of a, a reaction um, to her mm. dying because um, Ryan Johnson um, wrote his uh, scripts for episode eight based on early drafts for episode seven. Right, mm. then when um, JJ put out episode seven, it was different, mm. and so he had to change it. He rewrote, right? Mm. So, um, so it's always going to have to so be it's a always rewrite. Happening. And you know, as we saw with uh, with Rogue One, you know, it had all the reshoots. Everyone's like, ah, this is a catastrophe. It's not necessarily a catastrophe. All movies have reshoots. These were, you know, big reshoots. Mm. Um, but what but it made a, was, made an excellent film, movie, you know, and yeah. and that's that's with all art. It's even like you know, if you take drawing, you know, you, you start out drawing something, and then as you're going along, your ideas change, and you change it, and it becomes Absolutely. something yeah. different. So it's the same with movies. Um, this is this is actually just that instead of it being an organic change, something's happened here that's made them go, oh, we have to do something, you know. Um, and it's I think it's a bit of a this has just happened. Oh my God, what are we going to do? And yeah, let's now react. it's like, let's have meetings. Let's all discuss what we're going to do. And, you know, I suppose they want to get on it because they want to get ready for production, for pre-production and all that stuff. So mm. um, it's it's just that. But um, what the main part of that story is, is that there was already ideas for the character where she was meant to go and that um, they're considering the possibility of using some CG for certain scenes, which, to be honest, like there's a lot of CG scenes with characters that we see in movies anyway that you don't even realise the CG. It's just them from the side, or you know what I mean, like in the distance or whatever, and all the backgrounds are CG and all that stuff. I mean, you see the Batman Superman CG, how they put it all together, yeah. all of the cars and background. I was like, that was CG. I thought that was real. <laughs> mm. so, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the story there with that one. So potential spoilers. Um, does this mean spoilers are over? Yeah, spoilers over. If you're if you turn the sound down, look now. You can come back. Okay, cool. Right, spoilery people, right. we're we are done spoiling yeah. things and the, the until I start spoiling more things as well. So that's speculation. Pardon? The Adam Driver thing was speculation as well. So that's yeah, done. speculation, um, not really spoilers. Nah. So, are you ready for some reviews, Jay? I am very ready because you've read. Um, Star Wars Aftermath Life Debt, right? I have. And I haven't. So I, I, I'm still halfway through the first one. So I'll I'm tell you very what. interested to hear what you make of, of this one and what happens in it. This is a full spoiler review again. Yeah. So just well, spoilers. Look, I'll tell you what, I'm not, the spoilers, yeah. right? I'm not going to spoil it, spoil it. No. Um, but I, I think what I, I can't help but do is tell you some things about the book and... I don't know if I class it. I'm not going to try and tell you what happens in the, and ruin the story of the book, but there are some things in it that I need to talk about. Okay. Let's and go. just generally how it's done. So let's just first of all talk, you know, about the book. First of all, the first book, Aftermath, wasn't the best. Um, I think universally, most people who've read it 
have said that it wasn't the the the, the best written book in the world, and there was a lot that that first of all it tried to do too much. It was but what it was trying to convey was the aftermath across the whole galaxy of you know what happened in Return of the Jedi. Spoiler. Um, so. Um, and so basically what it was trying to do was it's, it introduced a core cast of new, a new cast, as well as trying to tell you what's happened to the Empire at the end of, of Return of the Jedi, as well as telling you what's happened to the New Republic forming of that. And then it would just cut all over the place and tell you little stories set in different places to give you this. Would do, I think the aspiration was to give you this feeling of all the different things happen across the galaxy all these little stories. Now, that was definitely trying to do too much because that would have been better to be in a little short story book. I was about to or, say, do you think that would have been better? It's just yeah, short stories. It's absolutely. Like the old ones I like the Jabba's Palace Absolutely. One that tells you it, the tales of the, em, tales. You know, that of the end great. of the Empire. And that's easier for someone like me to read. Yeah, and because, <laughs> and well, the thing is, because I've listened to it on audiobook and I've just found it so hard to work out who they were talking about because one, the most of the cast was new people. Right, yeah. Anyway, was there was the massive bump, disappointment right? that you weren't actually finding out what happened to Han, Leia and Luke anyway, because cause it was all builders, you know, Journey to the Force Awakens. Oh, yeah. You were expecting to find out what happened to them, and you didn't in that yeah. first film, the first book, sorry. It was all about setting up these new characters whose names you didn't know, and so me trying to remember who this person... Oh, I'm rubbish at names anyway. We've, we've all worked that one out. Trying to tr Me trying to keep on track with who these people were was doing me nothing. Um, and as I said, some of the writing was a bit a bit wonky, I thought. And it, to me, it felt rushed. Um, so moving on to Life Debt. So Star Wars Aftermath Life Debt, I better say, written by Chuck Wendig. Um, I'm just going to get my notes now, guys, because I that's... too am organised, just that's... like what just like Jay. Speak I... Of? <laughs> I know this uh, sorcerous ways of mine. <laughs> um, so Chuck Wendig is the author, uh, published in uh, July 12, 2016. My birthday. Uh, Delray. Huh? My birthday. It was. Yeah. yeah. What a lovely day. It was a lovely day. Oh. I went to LA that day. Did you? Yeah, you went. To, was that uh, when I was at Celebration? Yes, well, it was a few days later, yes. Because they had a big launch of this at Celebration. There were loads of them all over the place, a big bookstore. Uh, really nice, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, second novel, Second novel. it's canon. Um, it's part of a trilogy. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. the background. Um, so, basically, wh where we are is it's moved on a couple of months, maybe not much from the end of Aftermath. So, again, you've not read that. I'm not going to spoil the end no, of no, you can spoil. Aftermath either. You can spoil if you want this. So. Okay, I'll, so I'll basically... we at some point. Um, the, 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 the main crew now that we're following is Nora Wexley, Wexley who is um, a Y-Wing pilot from the Battle of Endor. Yeah. These guys were in uh, the comic as well, because there was a Star Wars... Yes, uh, was it Shattered Empire. Mark? Shattered Empire, they were in there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they were, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So, um, again, more confusion for the first book was not only were we introduced to Nora, but we kept flashing back to different parts in her life, which confused the hell out of me, because one minute we were talking about where she was, and then she was flashing back to being in the, in the Battle of Endor, and I was just like, what is going on? Anyway... So there's Norma Wexley. She is the mother of Timon Wexley, who I didn't twig last in the last book, but is Snap Wesley. <laughs> now, the reason I didn't twig this was because, one, they never called him Snap in the first book, and two, I thought he was the wrong age to be Snap Wesley because he was uh, meant to be about 16 in this book. And I thought he would be well too old to be the Snap Wexley that we knew in Force Awakens. But I'm wrong, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it's so, not that so, much later. Yeah, well, it's, it's 30 years, isn't it? Yeah, so he would be... 46, yeah, 50. Oh, yeah, he's in his 40s. Yeah, I'm, 
I think I've just realised I am rubbish at telling people's ages. Anyway, so, ignoring that. So we find out that is Snap, um, which is good. Um, and so he... he uh, so Nora Wexley, I'll just give you a bit of background on her. So she's a Y-Wing pilot from Return of the Jedi. Obviously, she's had a bit of um, shell shock from that as well, because that wasn't all fun and games, was it, being involved in that? Um, the backstory on her is that actually... Her husband, whose name I can't remember, it is on my list somewhere, but I'm not going to spend ages looking for it. Um, her husband was captured by the Imperials when Tenon was young, and that's when she joined the rebellion. So she only joined the rebellion because her husband, who was part of the rebellion, was captured. And so Tenon's grown up for most of his life without, but she then buggered off to the rebellion. And left Tenon on this planet with yeah. his with his aunts, his lesbian aunts. There's a lot of lesbians and gay people in this, which is good. They, you they, know, actually, bringing in... they did make um, a point of saying that it was the first time you were seeing some um, yeah, some gay yeah. It's people much more diverse stars. cast, absolutely. Mm. Um, and so he lived with his aunts, and so he's been a bit. He's got he he had a big chip on his shoulder about Nora because she buggered off and joined the rebellion, and his dad was missing, dead, whatever. Um, so she's the main character, uh, and she's also got a bit of an on and off thing with Wedge. Ooh. Ah. Because Wedge was in the first book. I won't say oh, what, what yeah, his role yeah, was in it, I've, I've read a couple but Wedge was in the yeah. first book. Yeah. Um, um, the other main... So she's the leader of a gang, and she's basically leading a group of Imperial hunters. So they go out, they're sent out by the New Republic to find like key people from the old imperial from the old empire and capture them and so in her group are, are the people that we were all introduced into in the first book so one of the other key characters <laughs> i just dropped my phone with the notes <laughs> professional um is oh and my dog's now barking um <laughs> is sinjar rathvelis so he was an ex-imperial officer again from the on the Battle of Endor, he basically realised that he was on the losing side, killed a rebel, nicked his clothes, and then pretended to be a rebel. <laughs> <laughs> the kill rebel defected to the rebels. Yeah, well, well he we didn't. All know. He, we all no, he, he just basically one. went and hid, and then he ended up getting engaged. So without ruining the first book, he then became part of the gang. Well, we all know in Rogue There's... One, the rebels do some dirty stuff from time to time. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, yeah. That's how well, And this rebels. gang is basically a bit bit rough and ready tough right. gang uh-huh. um there's another there's the bounty hunter jazz amari and she is a uh thingy uh, what's a mall what's what's staff mall a uh, zabrak yeah she's a zabrak so she's in um she's in uh the first book right yeah she's yeah, in the first I book remember so, get, so so now she's and something. she's become besties with senji for some reason uh and senji is a gay man as well which is, again, they go into that quite a lot, um, which is quite interesting. Uh, she's got, um, there's someone called John Burrell. Uh, he's in the little gang, along with um, Tinan. And Tinan's got a robot that he's rebuilt, which is an old battle droid called Mr. Bones, who's, again, one of the not better characters. But again, another robot that's a bit naughty, you know, another... F- bit psycho you know so we you know we're going down this line again of that side of things yeah, yeah they're kind of stuck on personalities there aren't they yeah so so the story is more about them the, the 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 thing that's different this time is we're actually it's much more about the new republic setting up the new republic what's happening to the end of the empire and leia and han are, and chewbacca are in this book so right in the first book, they weren't in it really hardly at all. They are mentioned a few times. But in this one, there's a mission. Leia's very much involved, in it, and it's setting up a lot of the storylines from the later Bloodlines book, okay. which is set six years before Force Awakens. So it's setting up all the political issues that are in there. It gives you the beginnings of how the First Order is potentially going to be built, it's also introduced um, on the Empire side. It's introduced um, first of all. There's uh, Admiral. Oh, here we go. Admiral. <laughs> Admiral. 
what is her name? Admiral Ray Sloan. Now, she was mm-hmm. introduced yep. all the way back in the New Dawn book, yes, which was. was the one with, um, which, in, which showed you how it uh, got to, yeah, became yep. chums and stuff. Now, so she's been in quite, I think she's been in some of the comics as well. She's like a war criminal or something. Yeah. Uh, well, no, well, so basically she's an admiral. She becomes, she basically becomes the face of the empire and right. becomes the leader of the empire. <laughs> um, but she's being advised by a mysterious fleet admiral who's in the background. Now, you only hear little bits of him in the first book. He His story is definitely much more revealed in this book. Right. And, and a lot of people are saying that he's going to be Snoke. Absolutely okay. not. Okay. I can tell you he's not. But I don't the, reckon the, he is. Is that clarified in this book? No, no, no. It's not clarified. Okay. But people are saying, oh, this bloke potentially could be Snoke. What makes you I, say that he isn't? Because it, it it's it, they've gone into too much detail on who he is in this. Is he seven um, foot tall? No, exactly. Okay. He's not seven foot tall. <laughs> um, he, I mean, you, you could look at it and you could fit him to be this character. I, I honestly don't think it's going to be him. Well, they've they've said that in uh, he, but he is a gr- going to be a seven foot tall dude. Yeah, well, he's not, and also he's a great prota- protagonist for this storyline. But I think by the end of this trilogy, he's going to be dead. Okay. That's my view on it anyway. Well, you've read to the end of the trilogy. No, because the oh. third book hasn't come out yet. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It comes out soon, though, next month. Oh, are you excited for it? I am really yeah. excited for it now. Okay, cool. Um, so, look, I'm not going to go into every single detail, but basically what this book does, the, the team that we, got to, that we were introduced to in the last book, now we know them, they actually work really well together. They're a great team. They're all really good characters. Um, quite a diverse group, as I said. And they've actually been given a mission and they've got a purpose that's links into something that we actually want to see, which is how the, um, the New Republic's mm. being built. Um, there's a really, really interesting storyline. The, the core storyline of this book is really good, really engaging, moves, again, moves things along. We're starting to see how it all fits into the wider story that we event- eventually end up in Force Awakens for. So that's all the good bits. There's still a tendency to get sidetracked on these random little stories. It just it's not as much. It, it sounds like that. It really does sound like there's so many different bits and it, dude, yeah, like the the read. They tell like you the story. Read. They tell you the story of the Rancorn Keeper. And what happens really? to him afterwards? Really? Of all the random Why? things you do not want care. to know, <laughs> you happens. find out what happens to him. Oh, okay, great. Brilliant. Is it it's, good? It's, Is it pointless? Well, again, unless it's set up for a future story, that's all I can think of. I think I think there is a lot. I think a lot of this is about trying to set up a bigger world. Now, the one thing Chuck does much better in this book, he references so many different sources. And this is, again, where I want to get into around how Lucasfilm is moving forward with this camera. Right. Uh-huh. Because there's he pulls down from Rebels, he pulls down from some of the comics, he pulls down from other novels, from Lords of Sith, from from the films. Obviously, there's influences as what's leading. So he's doing a good job. I mean, he's obviously got a massive... He's got Pablo and his crew behind him yeah, the story telling him, right, reference this, yeah. reference that, reference, which I'm worried about. You know, and we'll get on to that in a second. But um, he does, He it is becoming a, a much more cohesive universe. I did feel that it was slightly conflicting, I felt, with some of the things that we've established from the Bloodlines book. But then I think that's the issue with what's happening at the moment, which I don't want to get into because I want to talk about it in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so... To, to finish off my rough review, because it hasn't really been a review, it's just been me telling you, there's some really cool moments in this book, some really good bits. Um, there's some genuine surprises, I think. There are some bits I could see coming a million miles away. But it's a, the, the core story is really good, and, it, and definitely it's really worth... And it's basically the setting up for the next book. The next book is the one we want to see. It's going to be really good, I think. There's stories... That, there's links about the dark side. There's some clues potentially that could be all going back to the old Republic. Maybe there's, there's some hints there. There's also some interesting things about Leo and Han. 
Um, I don't think it's, I mean, it's, it's obviously something that happens in the book, but I don't think it's, it's not a massive spoilers. It's not going to ruin any up. So basically Leia is pregnant in this book. Right. Okay. So she discovers she's pregnant. Han and Leia are already married. They got married at the end of Endor, uh, the Endor battle. Um, and she talks about some of the lessons she's been learning from Luke in terms of the force. Right. So this is quite interesting. Yeah. That's now interesting. I've got a theory on it, um, which I don't know if you want to hear. Of course. Because so basically she's talking about how she's been Luke had been trying to teach her about some calming techniques and, and about centering herself and apparently the I think the tree that they, they get in Shattered Empire would have all the the force tree. Yeah. yeah. And about they she talks about trying to sense the tree and she'd never been able to do it. Now she's pregnant, she can. Right. Or she can sense something. So my theory is that all the force stuff that she's experiencing isn't her. It's, it's all. Quite, it's been, yeah. Yeah. And she starts having force dreams. There's some dreams about Padme. There's dreams. So he's forcing for two, or he is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's. So again, some interesting things there. It's all all playing out and potentially leading. You know, giving us a bit of a clue as to what happens to. To, you know, this isn't spoilers. We know what happens to Ben. You know, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so, yeah, we know yeah, where he's going. Um, yeah. you, you mentioned in it um, that it sort of starts to explain a little bit of how the New Republic was formed and uh, and and the First, first Order. First Order, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think. Well, without giving away any spoilers, um, with the bits where it talks about the First Order, does it sort of hint at anything as to to do with Snoke, or does it give us anything? Well, this is the thing because this is so basically this like this admiral guy that's this advisor to uh, Ray Sloan now, mm. and he she's got that's the official capacity. But really, he look. Oh God, I don't know if it's a spoiler or not. But basically, well, he, look, let's say there's he, some spoilers. In right, so, so so he's basically pulling the strings. He's in charge, and and Ray Sloan. To be, I don't know if you, did you read the old EU books? Do you remember Admiral Dala? Yes. She really reminds me of her in some respects. Right. And this is, again, it's sort of retouching different characters with different names and giving them aspects of old characters, so it's confusing me a little bit as to what I'm, well, what's can... canon and what isn't. Yeah. But, well, but, but very much, this, it, this guy is setting it all up, and right. he had strong links to the Emperor. And that's all I'll say without spoiling any more than that. Okay. But he definitely had links to the Emperor and was, and was given specific missions from the Emperor. And we don't know whether or not he even thinks the Emperor is alive. There's there's a lot of people saying that they and think this is the guy that everyone thinks is going to be Snake. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he sets up a shadow council, and in that is Hux's dad. Right. And people like and Hux gets you hear about Hux as well, his background and things like that, and he's a little shit and things like that. So, um, and it's all about. Oh, the Empire needs children if we're going to survive and all this kind of thing. And, he wants, and so it all talks to about the whole philosophy of how they create the stormtroopers in the future and stuff like right. that. Okay. So, 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 really so, so basically, and, and also the way that he's deploying the fleets and where the fleets are and where the ships have disappeared from, all this is setting up for potentially the First Order. Now, we know from Bloodlines, the First Order is not even a thing until at least six years before mm. Force Awakens. So, again, it's a long game, which is where I guess what I wanted to move on into in the discussion, really, is about the way that Lucasfilm is, is rolling things out. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I guess it's mainly the novels, but I think it's just generally the whole thing. It's the fact that they are... So, just before you go into this, mm. as it, it's a review, yeah. <laughs> out of oh, five, yeah. how, many, how many out of five do you give the book? Okay, I give the core story four and a half out of five. Okay. But the book as a whole, because there's a lot of guff in it, I'll give four. Yeah, I'll okay, knock it down so a bit. it's still a good book. It's still good. It's still good. I was, I was riveted throughout the whole thing. Just out of interest then, the first one, yeah. what would you have given that out of five? Uh, I would have given it two and a half to three. Okay. All right. But so uh, again, again I'm quite high school. Yeah, a big improvement, right. massive improvement. I, I mean, I know a lot. I saw a lot of review because I did a little bit of digging afterwards to see if there was anything I missed. Mm-hmm. 
And a lot of people were slating it on that first review, you know, the first book. I saw a lot of reviews saying now, you know, and, and they were a bit more critical about, you know, the way it's, the, the the way the tense was used I mean, like, I don't care about stuff like that yeah. I just want to know if it's a good story and it yeah. keeps me going and also the one thing I will say again I listened to an audible, audible version uh, read by Mark Thompson he's the best He all of the novels that he reads are brilliant he does brilliant voices again not everybody likes this in their audiobooks but these Star Wars audiobooks have sound effects they have music some people find that detracting. I love it. I think it enhances the story. I like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and he does some great voices, and they, you know, they turn him like Mr. Bones, the robot. They obviously make him sound like a battle droid. You know, that's not something you get if you're just normally reading it. So again, yeah, some people might not like that. I loved it. it. It all enhanced it for me. Cool. Awesome. Right now, on to your discussion. Right. So Sorry. on to my my gripe, or well, not my gripe, but my concern. My concern is. The way that we're telling things all out of context and out of chronological order now. So the great thing about the old EU books, predominantly most of them were set on a timeline. Right. We were telling the story over the, since from the Fawn trilogy all the way to the, the Fate of a Jedi series, which was the last one in the old EU. It was basically telling you that story from the end of Return of the Jedi all the way up for 30 years. Yeah, in order. And and yes, they did have a lot of other books, but they weren't in that core series. And you could go and read a book about Obi Wan or the Clone Wars, or but they weren't in that course. Yeah. So you, when you there were was reading that main storyline. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so everything evolved naturally, and and I guess that's where, you know, they told stories and they had filler stories and things like that. But ultimately, they built on and just kept on building on the story. Mm-hmm. My big concern is now we're jumping <laughs> all over the place. And as much as, well, as much as there's this massive hit team behind Lucasfilm keeping an eye on the stories, already I felt this story did not connect very well with Bloodlines. I what, felt it was what, at what odds. Was it? What was it that you felt well, was at odds? Well, it's just the way that, because obviously <clears throat> Bloodlines, have you read Bloodlines? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, a big part of Bloodlines is all about how the two fractions in the New Republic, um, there's one, I can't remember what they call them, centralists, and I, I, I want to say separatists, but it's not separatists, because that's from the old thing. But there's the, the ones that eventually are wanting it more of an empire-type, first ordery type, <laughs> and then there's the people that are really the, the core New Republic types. Yeah. And there's a real strong, different political split in that book, and there's, and it's all in, and you can see that's that's how the first order leads. And part of um, part of the bloodline story is all about how first of all that Leia gets her past revealed, and people find out that she's related to Darth yeah. Vader, and the fact that she's already lost Kylo, and he's gone off and done whatever he's doing, and the fact that. Um, through, you know, they, they want to elect a, a leader, a, a, a superior senator, and she's a shoe in for it. Then they find out that she's thingy. And then there's this whole storyline around how she great, creates this great bond with uh, a politician on the other camp. And ultimately, it's, it's a really good book, really interesting. And it, and it sort of explains how they don't have the full support of... Yeah, but at that before. time, the First Order is not established. And what I get the feeling from is from this book, which is set 30 years before, roughly, mm. they, they're almost ready to go. You know, right, potentially. Okay. It, it, the way I read it was, Chuck hadn't been told that's what's going to happen in Bloodlines. <laughs> and so he was he was getting ready to tell you how the First Order was going to be formed. Right. And, and I'm sure that by the next book, they're going to slow it down. But yeah. I think, yeah, I think like... there was a bit of a miscommunication in between this. And I think it's a mistake to be, cho- particularly within that timeline, that, that small timeline, to be chopping. Uh, it's, cause, and this it goes back to Rebels and Rogue One. Mm. You know, there's a difference of two years at the moment. Mm. It's a real dodgy territory to be telling a story which could have a massive impact on something that's ongoing. I just yeah. think 
I, they I are going to they're going to they're going to open themselves up to plot holes by sticking to everything being canon. Well, it's the thing that we were saying earlier, like things that are already mm. starting to bug you, like say with the Jedi, for example, like that's starting to bug me that they're just around, and when it's like the Jedi all but extinct, they it's like they died last week, so now they're extinct. We need some new ones, you know. And same with like having all these comics, like there's so many different titles that keep coming out, and yeah. you've got ones that are based around, you know, Darth Vader. We saw Darth Vader we've got the main mm. Star Wars one. Now you got the Poe Dameron ones. So that's telling a story about Poe Dameron. Well, how far can you go with these stories? Because you know, they, they're going to want to keep creating stories. They want to keep on keep having more titles come out or having more ongoing ones because it's more money. Mm. And then you've got, like, more books coming out. Well, they've got to tell a story that's interesting people, to people, so they're going to try and fill in bits between Empire and Jedi or something like that. But then there'll be comics that are doing that too, so now they have to match up. And mm. for me, personally, some of the things that I've read in, in those comics, I haven't read through all of them, but um, there are bits in it, and I was like... Ah, right, you know, and I think there was a bit where Luke runs into Vader already, and I'm like, that kind of sucks. Like, it's too early. Because yeah. for me, when he met him in Empire, that was, that was about the first, yeah, right, yeah. That was the first time. And, and so it's like, well, they met each other, that, that makes that less less special or less interesting, you know, mm. and, and they're going to start doing this stuff, which is why, you remember what we were talking, I think it was last week, and I said, okay, look, I'm kind of cool with, let's say we have movies and books. But then the comics and games and that should be their own thing because then they yeah. can just go do what they want. Anyhow, they bring in the green bunny, Jackson, right? <laughs> That's going to piss me off because then in canon, there's green bunnies running around the, the Star Wars galaxy. And you can start – because also with the comics and that, they're going to have all these characters to play with. But the creators are going to want to make their own characters, right? So you've, you're going to go on to this after. You've read Aphra. A lot of people seem to like her as a character. Cool. And they like the um, the droids as well, BT yeah. and uh, the Triple Zero. So, okay, they've done all right there. But I haven't got through all the, all the Darth Vader ones, but I was having a look at a couple of um, issues, and there's like the character looks like Kanan and the woman with the like shades embedded in her face and the twins with lightsabers again. And I'm just like, they, they don't feel like Star Wars characters to me. No. Like, I think they're, they're stupid. And then you've got General Tag ordering vader around and they will talk to him like he's a little bitch and i'm like no that's stupid like th this is the stuff that's going to start becoming annoying but they're going to have to keep doing more because you're going to run out otherwise right and they know people are going to buy it because it's Star Wars. but you put Star Wars and people are going to spend money yeah but and, and this is where we've from being cool to becoming ridiculous yeah and i mean we've thing. been lucky that they didn't just throw out a shitty old film with um Rogue One, because no, they could have quite easily put a load job. of crap out and people would have gone to see it. You can tell that there's love, right? Yeah. Everyone working on it, you can tell that they love it. They're like us, mm. like all you know, the fans. They, they love this stuff. But it's really dangerous ground. To have it all, so everything tied mm. into a canon is dangerous. I don't want the video games to be canon because I want to be able to just, you know, play out a story i want an, an open world you know open galaxy one where you can go and stuff happens and you know wherever uh, the comics you know if you want to um invent some characters or take it off in another direction make them more of a, a what if or make them legends there's no harm in having more legends i'm cool with that they're legends of the star wars galaxy even the books to an extent it would be better if maybe there was um one set of books that as like with the old um e it's going to be the this one's going to be the canon timeline and this is yeah. going to tie together but all the other ones they can be legend stories mm. why not do that that that's cool people buy it like me i i personally don't feel the need to buy the legends ones because i i want to read that story as canon but some people like to read all the different stories you know i don't know i mean well they don't uh, they don't even need to to be not canon uh, no i'm just but, trying but what they yeah, idea, but, but what we do head, need but... is let's have a clear timeline of what we're going to tell the story on. Mm. You know, and and, and, and jump around. Yeah, not yeah. Ju it's because it's confused. I, I think this is the hardest bit because it, over the past couple of months, I've watched Rogue One, I've read Aftermath, I've read think comics set between Star Wars and Empire. I've, you know, it's mm. and I've read. Uh, the other, because also the other novels that have come out, like Laws of Sith was before, was set earlier. Tarkin was set before that. Um, 
the new dawn book was set at a different period mm. um but even, uh, even like, dark disciple the the um the, yeah um, the clone Asai. wars era yeah, yeah you know so all of these books i've read over the past six months or whatever i i don't know where i'm supposed to be <laughs> but they also kind of um do themselves a slight disservice as well because um with the movies especially now after rogue one coming out and seeing vader right mm. everyone's like oh my god vader was awesome right let's so have more vader. So much things people want to tell now uh lords of the sith that is vader doing was in that movie right yeah that's 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 a good story and um people may have wanted to see a movie of that you can't do it now because you can't make a movie and make it exactly the same as the book. Yeah, which is the danger of what, you right. know, when we talk about earlier with, Clo- with um, Rebels and Darth mm. Maul and Obi-Wan. Yeah. Save that for the films, man. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. all want to see Hugh McGregor versus Darth Maul again. Yeah. And Ray Park can still do Darth Maul. Yeah. He can still do it. You know, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, man. I'm totally uh, in the same boat with this. Initially, when, when they first talked about it, um, there was this, okay, yeah, that sounds cool, because, you know, Marvel have done a good job with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mm. having all the movies tied together, and to an extent, you could say, like, Daredevil now, you know, they, they reference yeah. the events but that's and stuff like that. two stories a year, and they didn't even do a great job of tying in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> yeah, they didn't. Did they? And they've made that not part of the canon now, right? They've said that it's not. Have they? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've read that. But Agent mm. Shield isn't. But anyway, where right. I don't, but I don't think it'll be here this time next year anyway. The, so the point of it is that um, if they just kept it to movies and TV shows or something like that, then you mm. could do it. You could work it out, and you have all these great ideas that you could say, hey, "Lords of Sith, man, that'd be a good movie." See how people responded to Vader. People mm. would like to see that. You're not going to be able to do that now. So now you're going to, if you want to put out another Vader movie, you're going to have to make something kind of similar and mm. fit it in somewhere for the sake of fitting it in somewhere. Yeah, you're right. It, it, and some things become for the sake of it now as well. Like, they don't need to do all that stuff. So, and what you said last week um, about some characters are best when they're mystery, yeah. you can, you're going to lose all the mystery of all of the characters <laughs> because they've got to do something with them. They want to put them somewhere. They want to, oh, we need more stories. Ah, what do we do? Should we make a new character? No, oh, no, but what about, you know, this one? We'll do a story about him people don't know much about Dengar's background mm. and then they'll give us his full family history and his mum was related to you know Palpatine or I don't know <laughs> do you know what I mean it'll end up going down that road because right now it's where it is and you said oh, I'm seeing a couple of little things that didn't seem so up fast forward um, another like seven Ten years, years. Or, yeah. yeah right where are we going to be because especially the amount of books that come out and the amount of comics that come out because the films and TV shows, you can contain it, like one a year, we might get two a year, um, and then you've got, you know, Rebels is going to finish here, they're going to do another cartoon, cool, and maybe they go for a live action show. But the amount of comics, that's what made me stop buying the comics, was mm. that they just kept on bringing more and more and more out. And the amount of books, that I, I, I'm a slow reader, I just couldn't keep up. <laughs> I was just like, I, I can't, I just can't. And now I've got the Audible, I'll try and get some more, but... You know what I mean? You end up getting to a place where it's it's just going to be a mess. Mm. I don't I don't know even with a really good team sitting there working it all out. At some point, there's going to be a hole. And it's not even it's not even that they're going to make a mistake. I think what it's going to do is it's going to cramp creativity. Yeah. Because again, be Chuck's going to gonna, Chuck's probably going to be told now. Look, just be careful. Don't talk about this. Don't mm. talk about that mm. because we we don't know what's happening here. Mm. But don't don't cover that period then. Yeah. Talk about a period that you can talk about yeah. and yeah, totally. say run with it. Yeah. Don't stifle creativity because we know that potentially this is going to ruin or or create a problem down the road. Because that's where they're going to write themselves into a I box and they're going to have to reboot. At some point, well, I don't think it'll be a reboot, but at some point it will be. Uh, yeah, this stuff's not canon anymore. Yeah, there'll it's going to have to be. There'll be a bunch of stuff that will just stop being canon. And then it'll be a bit of a rewrite of canon. And then you've got to go back over things like um, like uh, the the Galaxy Atlas and yeah. the Visual Dictionaries Look, and stuff like that. We're, go, oh, well, we're that comic canon, fans. But that's not canon. Yeah. Yeah. We're comic fans. Mm. And I'm now at the jaded age of going through 
so many different reboots of the comic universes that I must admit, I now I, I used to care. I I mean, I was a big DC Comics fan. I still am a big DC Comics fan. But the thing I loved about that was the, the canon and the connectivity and how they use story to explain how it's been going for 70 years or whatever. Mm. And then I'm just getting to the point now where they keep rebooting and rebooting and Marvel just don't bother. They just change their mind and don't and just sweep it under the carpet. Um, I, I've seen it all a million times now. Yeah. And what I don't want is for that to happen to Star Wars. I don't want to be... And, and this is, again, where I'm concerned about Wood. There's a lot of nods to ships, to characters. You know, some of the ships have got the names from, like, there's, um, I think, the Emperor's private um, Star Destroyer has got the same name from the original um, Dark Empire comics, you know, one right. of the first of the new EU stories. And um, But it's a slightly different ship. And you know, like I say, I think... Uh, this Ray Sloan has got very reminds me a lot of Admiral Darla mm. and some and also the other Admiral that was Pallion that was um, on the good side or the, the the Galactic I can't remember what they called Galactic Alliance wasn't it? Um, so there, there's there's Flay and like I say with Fawn coming back so they're gonna they're gonna start retreading the same old story. That's what I don't want to see. I don't want to see. A new, like, like how I've seen so many versions of Superman's yeah. origin. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to see that for characters in Star Wars. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you, you're gonna, you're definitely gonna see a lot of the popular characters from the EU being brought in. That's definitely happening because. But it's uh, like, for instance, they're gonna have to change their backstory a little bit. Well, we've seen that with Thrawn already. Well, know, like, well, um, a good example is in this book, um, the Life Debt. Um, Without getting into why, Wedge creates a, a squadron of um, X-wing people, right. and obviously in the old EU there was the Wraith squadron. There's the Phantom squadron in this. Ah, okay. It sounds roughly the same. Obviously a very similar name. Which oh yeah, it's a nice nod. Well look, either do what you did in the old thing and just call it that. Yeah. But yeah. don't do something slightly different because yeah, it's just yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's I don't want to because because definitely the way I'm fe- the way I feel about Han, Luke, and Leia in the new what I'm call- calling the new Fifty Two of Star Wars <laughs> is they are slightly different characters. The way that um, th- it's the best analogy for me is that the DC universe when it became a new Fifty Two, all the characters were not back in age, and they're all slightly more darker. Yeah. And I feel they've done that with Luke and Leia and Han. Since The Force Awakens, they've changed the characters a little bit. What, and, in, and what in the books or in the comics? For everything. Right. So the, the character of Leia and, and Han are not the characters that I grew up with. They are slightly different versions. They are like, they're like the Calvin verse of Star Trek. When the they're slightly they different. In the movie, in Force Awakens, they were still them, just older. You couldn't really. No, there's there's a def and it, particularly now that these books are in canon, the stories that you're reading, they're giving you a different, a slightly different flavour than the characters I I know. But when you watched the Force Awakens, did you feel that they were different? I just yeah. thought, okay, they're older, and we haven't seen what well, they've no, been through. I, I think in the Force I mean, Awakens, Luke's obviously you, the most you, different. I think you couldn't pick it up because you don't see enough of them. Yeah. But I think because now I've started reading all this canon stuff, when I watch Force Awakens again, I see them as different people. Mm. Right. Because our, cause, cause our experiences are different than what the experiences well, I knew they had before. Well, even going back to what I said about Luke meeting up with Vader, that all that just makes you watch those original movies completely different. Now, yeah. with Rogue One making me watch uh, Episode 4 different, I kind of liked that because yeah. in that in that case it made me go it was just the, the realizations of like oh wow just before this happened this was going on yeah. that was quite exciting because they did a good job of it but the stuff like Luke um, facing off against Vader and, and all that kind of stuff I'm just like mm. what well, in his yellow jacket you know uh, and and then um, when Boba Fett uh, hunted down Luke and then took his name to Vader and it was like mm-hmm. ah well 
Boba Fett's a popular character, so we'll say that Vader told him to go and do it, and then the, yeah, he tripped over, so he so Luke got away because it was something like that, wasn't it? He tripped over or something. Luke escaped, so it's like, oh yeah, Boba Fett, that really good bounty hunter, he's bumbling, mm. and so Luke escaped. But don't worry, I got a name. What is it? Skywalker, and then the glass starts to crack. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, okay, and and that you know that as a separate comic book story, like not the canon comic book story, it's fine. Yeah, but it makes everything different. You know, it, it makes all of it different. Look, I, I think we're probably too early on in this new world of Star Wars to make a firm decision as to what they're doing is right or wrong. And we do like So I'm, I'm quite happy to park this now and sort of say, yeah. I'm. let's see what happens. Yes, I but agree. I, all I'm saying is I've got some little butterflies in my little belly. Yeah, about no, what's I happening hear you, here. Man, I hear you, I agree. And I, I just, I th- and I definitely like to hear what other people think on this. I would like know. to as well. I'd be interested to hopefully um, people on the uh, Facebook group, and we should start wrapping up because this is now our longest show we've ever done. Yeah, um, and I'm getting up early tomorrow. Yes, so am I. <laughs> um, yeah, no people, so let's wrap it up. Um, hopefully you'll check us out on our Facebook group. Yeah. Which is on Facebook, and it's called Force Forced Conversations. Conversations. Um, you can also find us on Twitter at, at Force Convo, and you can hashtag Force Convo as well if you want to keep us in the loop on the conversation. That's right. Um, you can get Colin on Twitter at Captain Colin, and you can get Jay on Twitter on at the underscore letter J underscore Tank. Yeah. You can and... also email us. On uh, force conversation, no force convo <laughs> at gmail dot com. Yep, um, and we are on SoundCloud and we're on iTunes and we're now on the Taylor Network of podcasts, where there's a lot of other good podcasts for you to check out, including um, Go Trek. No, no apologies. Uh, nothing on Gotham by Geeks. Go. Uh, double page more. spread. Look at um, that. JK's Happy Hour, Go Trek Yourself, uh, and I'm sure there's much more. But They're all great. Colin isn't good at names, but he knows all the names of podcasts. Yes, so because I is. love podcasts. <laughs> so, uh, And I love all the podcasts on the Taylor Network of Podcasts, because that's where our home is now. Um, yes. Um, also, YouTube. So, we're on the YouTubes. You're watching us now, hopefully, on the YouTubes. We have a facility for you to like this video. Press Click that little thumb, thumb button. Catherine Kennedy said, like this video. She, she tweeted me about it. She said, tell those viewers to press that bloody button. Tell people to view it first and then yeah. tell them yeah. to press the like button. Watch it. Click the thing and also subscribe to the channel. But also there's the opportunity to leave a comment there. So leave a little comment. You can also write a review on our podcast, either on the Force Conversation podcast feed or on the Taylor Network podcast feed. And make a good review. Yeah, just tell them how brilliant I am, (laughs) how organised I am, and how I remember everything I'm supposed to be talking about. And I don't drop my phone and and suddenly wander off camera. You know, it's good. And and, and if you did, that would just make it more entertaining. Yeah. uh, And And I look cool. You will. like this video. You will enjoy this. You will love it. You will subscribe to this channel. You Um, will give us five stars. Right, so, anyway, wrapping it up now. Wrapping it up. Wrapping it up. So, until next week, may the force be with you. Punch it, Chewie!